This is the Pecron, Pecron, what the proper pronunciation is, E600 LFP power station that was sent to me by these folks. And it's pretty cool. Been testing it here for about the last hour or so and setting it here with my IC705, just kind of listening to some 20 meters. It's amazing what you can hear on that MFJ telescoping antenna plugged directly in there. Had to turn my trailer off to get uh, rid of some of the RFI, but I wanted to test this. Now, let me show you this right here real quick. Ever since I did my first power station solar generator video a few months ago, I get emails from people asking me to make videos for their products. And that's what happened with these guys. This one comes in this nice little case. This, this case comes with the power station. Obviously, the power station itself won't fit in there. But this case comes with it. And it houses all of the connectors and charging cables for the unit. So I really like that. I really like the fact that this case... Some of them just come with like a cardboard box that gets easily destroyed if you're going to put it in a pack or something. Other ones don't come with anything at all. This one actually comes with a nice protective case for your charging station. This guy right here is a lithium ion charger. Output is 42 volts at 7 amps. So that'll do some serious charging right there. This is a proprietary plug. This guy right here for the power station itself. So that goes to MC4 connections. This one will allow you to charge it via cigarette lighter adapter if you want. This is my favorite one, of course. It, come, it actually comes with power poles. I didn't make this, it came with it. So you got your proprietary, uh, proprietary connection for the power station and you can plug directly into power poles. All of the Gigaparts panels have power poles on them and some of the other panels that I have have power poles on them for a solar panel setup. So you can do it that way if you prefer. But I always, I always like to point out when power poles are included from the manufacturer in one of these setups because as you all know, that's, the, that's what most of us use is power poles. This is the front of the unit. Now, I've said this before in multiple videos, but a lot of these guys use the same screen across all these different brands of power station. This screen is actually different. This is just, it's just, it's not better or worse or anything. It's just different. It's just what different than what I'm used to seeing on a lot of these other power stations. So we've got 26.4 volts and 203 hours on the battery right now. That's because nothing's plugged into it. So you can hit DC out here. It's 100%, hit that again. 26.4 volts, 100% power, and then AC out, if you hold that down, it turns on these plugs here, and it pops up a new meter on the screen there. So you can have that off and on. Over here, we've got an 18 watt and a 100 watt PD uh, USB-C port. That's kind of fun. And an 18, and two 18 watts USB-A ports. And then we've got these 12 volt 10 amp ports uh, for DC output right here. This is these are proprietary, or not proprietary, these are those standard barrel connectors that you have. And of course, that's a cigarette lighter adapter. These are the input ports with the proprietary connector. That one there is the standard barrel connector. Uh, the cable that I just showed you with the MC4 connectors would go in there. And then the uh, proprietary connector they have goes in there. So 32 to 95 volts, 400 watt max on that one. And then 12 to 18 volts, 100 watt max on that one. So that one's obviously... Not as big, but it'll take a 400 watt solar panel to charge it. That's pretty fun. That's pretty fun. I think the coolest part about this is the built-in, like that's just painted on right there. And that's a wireless charging port for your phone. Take my phone right there. And you can see it just came up on the screen. There we go. So now my phone is charging just by sitting it on top of that station. So that'll be awfully useful in the campsite or in the gazelle tent or in, even in the uh, even in the RV camper here. Plug in whatever you need to that and then set your phone on top of it. You don't need an extra cable. You don't need an extra port. You don't need an extra anything to charge your phone. You can save these for your radios or your light packs, battery packs, whatever. I like to do RFI tests on these. So we're going to plug some stuff into it. I want to plug in a USB cable to charge the phone and see if it affects the, the screen on the 705 right there we can see what we're seeing on the on the waterfall right now we're outside so there's a little bit of glare in the screen but we've got a we've got a pretty good uh, pretty good signal coming in not too much noise on the band today with the MFJ telescoping 20 meter antenna right there so I'm gonna plug a couple things in got my phone plugged in it came up and it said it was charging unplug it there and plug it back in just so it's on camera 94% right there and there's no difference on the waterfall so charging USB is not going to really show any difference on the waterfall. 
so that's good. I was hoping to charge my R Finder P10 tablet, but it takes a, a pretty beefy output power to charge that thing. I think this 100 watt USB-C port would charge it, but I don't have a USB-C to USB-C cable with me. I would need USB-C on this end and on that end. I don't have it with me, so I'd be interested to try that later, unless I can find a USB-C to USB-C cable. I'm going to plug this in, because I can charge the R Finder tablet from the adapter, from the AC adapter it has. We're going to try that next. All right, turning on the AC causes noise in the band. You see that waterfall? Noise is going away. I'm going to, I'm going to hold down this AC button on this and let you guys watch the waterfall next. Haha. <laughs> There it goes. Now, this is not unusual for DC to AC inverters to do this. And I've got these two guys sitting right next to one another. So we're going to, I'm going to grab that uh, radio bag and walk away with it here in a second. But I'm not even charging anything right now. I'm going to plug in my Airfinder tablet. And yeah, some more noise came up when I plugged that in. It's got 21 watts out right now. So if I unplug this, you can see all that changes. Yeah, drops down to zero, zero watts out. Plug this in. Takes it a second to up, update. That's normal. 18 watts out. 16, about 16 hours it'll stay on this. This battery will charge this for 16 hours, which it won't take that long. That's just how much battery life you have left. But it is puking all over the band. You can see that right there. So now the question is... What's the proximity of RFI on that thing? If I were to take it over there and set it down, would it do as badly or what? So let's try that. It's pretty much gone right here. I'm 10 feet away from it. I can still kind of hear it, but the waterfall, it, the waterfall is clear. Right there, it's completely gone. Maybe 12 feet. Yeah, not, not far at all. So it's not like I gotta walk a quarter mile out that way to get the RFI out of the, out of the waterfall. And this is a vertical antenna. If you put up a, a longer wire antenna and strung it uh, for a longer path over here you probably uh, have a little bit more interference and that's gonna play a factor into it as well but to me you know most AC inverters uh, DC to AC inverters cause RFI I've yet to find one that doesn't without spending a lot of money but I mean you know that's it is what it is so it just depends on what you want if you want to use DC output on that power station most of the time I think you're gonna be okay because we didn't have any tr trouble with the USB charging and whatnot it was only when we turned the AC on that we had that come up but you can see that it's not very far away and you can totally use that just keep them a little bit separated if you want to do it that way once again special thanks to uh, Pecron for sending me this power station pretty impressed with it so far one thing I didn't show is that all the ports are on the front here. And I've mentioned that about other power stations in the past. I don't particularly like when there's ports on two or three or all, all four sides because then you've got wires coming out everywhere. And in some situations, that's okay. But like, if you're going to put this in the corner of a tent, if you're going to use it camping, you're going to put it in the corner of a tent, now I can stick it over there in the corner and just have uh, all my plug-in connections going into one side and kind of back it up to the back corner of the tent and not have to worry about wiring stuff around and going out of the tent and whatnot. So I really like the wireless charging for the phone on it because that means you don't have to have an extra cable for it and that kind of thing. These kind of semi-rubber feet that are on it right here allow you to set it down not only in proper configuration, but you could set it on its back if you wanted to, like that, if you want. Oh, the I just heard the noise come up because I moved it. <laughs> nice. Polarization, baby. But you could set it on this back right here if you wanted to. You could set it, I guess you could set it on its front. I don't know why you'd want to. Uh, but if you set it down on its front for storage or something, this these protective uh, feet kind of keep it from scratching up your screen and whatnot. So pretty much a win-win. I'm pretty happy with it. Looking forward to using it on my next camping trip, and we'll see how that goes. Thank you for watching today. Put a comment below and let me know what solar generator slash power station you're currently using right now and what you think about it. 73.